This is John Patrickoff, and you're listening to Pro Lacrosse Talk. On Shriver. Snyder with scores. Now it's Brett yeah. Pinnell scores. Hands off for Ravel. Switches hands and scores. Kylie Elmiller showing off those shifty skills. Right off the bat, there's Lyle Thompson. Welcome to season two of the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast, the voice of Pro Lacrosse. I'm Hutton, he's Adam, and together we're bringing you interviews from all your favorite players and coaches, as well as news and analysis from all four professional lacrosse leagues. Welcome to another episode of the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast. This is Hutton Jackson, and I'm joined by my co-host Adam, as well as PLT contributor Nicole Weaving. You probably recognize her from our Quick Stick segment that she hosted and produced every week, and sometimes daily throughout the summer. Nicole, welcome to the show, and it's great to have you on. Thank you guys. I'm excited to join and talk some women's lacks. I know it's exciting that we're actually talking about another women's lacrosse league. We were a little worried once uh, the WPLL announced that they were folding, uh, but we will have women's professional lacrosse next summer in the form of Athletes Unlimited. Very excited about that. We actually talked to Sammy Joe Tracy and John Patrickoff about the league. So I'm going to toss to that interview that I did with them a little bit earlier today. Today I'm joined by CEO and founder of Athletes Unlimited, John Patrickoff and a player in this upcoming league, Sammy Joe Tracy. Both of you, thank you for coming on the show, and uh, we're excited about this Athletes Unlimited League. Um, first off, from a player's perspective, Sammy Joe, how excited are you that women's lacrosse is returning in the summer of 2021? Thank you for having me, and I am extremely excited. It is incredible what we're doing here at Athletes Unlimited, and I'm excited to have... Um, just a place to play and grow as a player, even post-college. No, that's awesome. And it's exciting. You're joining uh, 21 other athletes that are currently signed on. You guys are hoping to have 56 signed on by the time the league starts. Um, John, from your perspective, uh, you know, this is a successor of the WPLL, which folded this past summer. Um, However, the model is quite unique in terms of sports leagues. Talk to me a little bit about what makes Athletes Unlimited uh, a very unique structure um, and kind of maybe some of your other leagues and, and what, appeal to you about adding lacrosse to your uh, portfolio of uh, professional leagues? Yeah, so, so it's great to be here. Thanks again for having us on. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that that where I'd start is what makes Athletes Unlimited uh, different. There are a few different things. I mean, first is this is very much uh, a league that's driven by the athletes themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only um, is, is their compensation model aligned so that they're sharing in the profits and not only sharing in the profits short term, but long term. But they're very involved in decision making day to day. You know, Sammy Joe's just kind of joined recently, but we've got uh, a player executive committee that's involved from, from the beginning and is helping make all the decisions along the way. So um, she was actually selected and identified by those players herself. There's not a, a commissioner or myself kind of making the decisions about who's playing and who's not playing. So very much this is a player driven organization. I think that's a big difference in most pro leagues that have existed in the past in any sport. Um, so that's the first thing. The second is it's a really new model of competition. We'll get into it. Um, but really it's all centered around letting fans follow the athletes, uh, and the individual leaderboard that we've created. So there's no fixed teams, teams change on a week to week basis. I think that's really exciting for fans, uh, really exciting for the players and a really big distinguishing factor with athletes unlimited. No, that's great. And we're looking forward to seeing how this uh, plays out. You guys already had a, a softball league, which was successful and then have an upcoming indoor volleyball league as well. Um, from a player's perspective, Sammy Joe, what kind of appealed to you? You know, you were approached to join this league. Um, kind of what kind of got you convinced to sign up? And, uh, you know, what are you looking forward to most about playing next summer? I think it's very cool that I was approached by the player executive um, league. So I had friends or like my idol actually from Carolina approached me. And so it was very comforting to know that she trusts this league and what they're doing. So it's a little bit different than having someone on a board um, or someone that doesn't really know lacrosse. Like she is fully invested in it and she's a mother, she's very dynamic. So that was really cool. Um, I also am super excited as a player who's super creative and fun. Like I, think the model is so so different from anything I've ever seen or before and it gets me like really excited and a lot of energy and you can't really take any days off because um 
you're kind of individualized, but in a team. So it makes it really dynamic and mm-hmm. you, even, you can't take a day off or decide oh, I'm going to, you know, slack in any second because it's just all eyes on and your peers are the one that, that are judging you, not um, a franchise. No, it's definitely an interesting model. John, why don't you talk to us a little bit about this leaderboard that you guys have developed and uh, kind of how it's going to work for this lacrosse league. Yeah. Um, so here's the concept between athletes unlimited, um, bring together the best athletes in the sport to one location, uh, for a short, intense season, uh, mm-hmm. in the case of lacrosse, it'll be five weeks. Um, so, uh, in the 56 player pool, um, each week there'll be a draft. The four players uh, at the top of the leaderboard will be the captains and they will literally draft their teams for that week. They'll have to fill spots based on, on you know, what's required for a roster. Um, and then when you play in a game, Tammy Joe and others play in a game, you get points based on how well does your team do mm-hmm. and how well do you do individually in your, in your position. Um, and every minute of the game, there are points accumulating um, and you play through the weekend, you play each player, each team plays three games. So it's kind of a round robin. And at the end of the weekend, the players who are at the top of the leaderboard, the top four become the captains for the next week. You go that way for five weeks. And then as you come into that final weekend, you know, people are vying for, you know, who's going to be at the top of the leaderboard and be the champion, but every spot matters. In other words, there's a bonus pool at the end. And if your player 32 or 31, there's a difference in how much money you're going to earn at the end. And also the bragging rights of being in the top four, being in the top 10. So Mm -hmm. um, I I should say this has, you know, we just completed an amazing season um, of softball. Um, We've announced we're going back for season two of softball. So, you know, I think shows that this has really worked hundred percent of the players have expressed a desire to return. Um, And, you know, there's a mantra in softball. I'm actually not as familiar with how it exists in lacrosse, but like in, in softball, there's a mantra of like, win the inning, win the inning. And that's the mentality, mm-hmm. right? You come off the play, the field, no matter even what the score is, there's still points on the line and you just come out with a super le- high level of intensity. I think it's really fun. No, I think that's fascinating because it, you know, kind of eliminates the idea of like, you know, teams tanking or kind of dialing it in a, a quarter. Um, you have to, you know, go all out. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's very fantasy sports-esque, which I like uh, here at Pro Lacrosse Talk. We are big fantasy sports fans. Um, I know you guys did kind of a pick em platform for softball. Are you guys going to introduce something similar for fans to kind of engage and, you know, get to kind of pick their own team as well? So uh, it's great you ask. So we did a couple of really cool things. Um, first was um, we had a, a uh, a partnership with DraftKings where you'd answer, you know, 10 questions each week, you know, mm-hmm. predicting which players you thought would perform well and, you know, which team would end up doing well. We had an incredible participation, 60,000 people participating in that. It was spectacular. It totally blew us away, blew DraftKings away. They had no expectation that it would be that popular. Um, so that was great. We also did something where you track points. Uh, you know, during the game and you could kind of predict what was going to happen next or who was going to score. So that was awesome. I think what you just mentioned is the next phase, which we're talking about, which is each week, let's let fans pick their team and then, mm-hmm. and then watch how their team does and how many points they accumulate in the course of the week. Cause the system's so well set up, you know, to see how did Sammy Joe or other, how many points did they pick up that week? Again, the points are going to be driven by whether you contribute to your team and whether it's a winning team. I just want to make that really clear. It's like 70% of the points come from, do you win? Mm -hmm. So um, it's very cool. It totally lends itself to that. And if you just want to even sit back, you know, while you're watching the game uh, on TV or, uh, you know, wherever you might be watching it, um, you can sit with the leaderboard right by the side and see how people are moving up and down each play. So it's, it's really fun, really cool. No, that's fascinating. Again, like we mentioned, we're big fantasy sports fans, so we're definitely looking forward to that. Um, Sammy, you're joined by 21 of your fellow athletes, too. What has kind of the conversation been uh, with each other about, you know, joining this league? I know you've kind of been talking to each other about, um, you know, this opportunity. So what's the excitement level of your fellow athletes? Uh, what has been the conversation, I guess, with, uh, with each other? I think everyone is super excited and nervous and obviously everyone's nervous about a new league. Things are changing, but I think what's really cool is, you know, the 56 player pool that we keep rotating in and then the four captains, Mm -hmm. just how can I contribute and like, what is my contributing factor? So with, when I express it to other girls and we talk about it, I'm a draw girl and attacker. So I, it's really great for me because I can get draws, I can feed, I can score. Ground, I love ground balls. So that's where I feel like 
again, a lot of my points, but also I think we have to remember that team wins are the most important thing and where you get the most points. So with like my good friend, Kaylee Waters, who's a goalie, she's like, oh, well, I don't take face-offs. I don't feed and score, but I just save goals. But it, she could be like the top winner I think recently a softball pitcher in the other league was the number one um, girl on the leaderboard and she played only in a couple games, but she consistently won and put like was the consistent on her, like, I guess, saves. I, <laughs> I would just kind of relate it to. So everyone has the opportunity to um, contribute and be the best, no matter what your position is, as long as you're recruiting the right people and getting on that winning team. It's not about who you played with in college, or I think everything is a wash now. It's who's going to be the best. It's money involved. And I don't think we've ever played with big money like that. Well, for us. So Mm -hmm. I think that's super exciting and it makes everyone hungrier and just ups the intensity level just a little bit. Maybe no, absolutely <laughs> and you and you know with them the team switching each week it's going to be exciting to see too like you know who who kind of stands uh, up at the top of the pack week to week um john i know you guys are still deciding on a site um have you just dis- like you know had any conversations with sites can you reveal any on the location and then i know you also guys are um you know again covid will kind of play how things happen next summer but uh you try to do a lot of outreach too with young players. So what is the kind of, what are you guys kind of doing in that front in terms of location and uh, reaching out to youth lacrosse players? Yeah. So, so again, what's really, one of the things that's very unique about the league is that we are situated in kind of in one city or, or one location. Um, so softball was outside Chicago and, and Rosemont, Illinois. We have a volleyball league, which we haven't talked about, which launches in February. That'll be in Nashville. Um, and I think for lacrosse, we're, we are definitely targeting the mid Atlantic. We've, mm-hmm. we've, uh, had a couple of site visits and, and are making some progress. I think, um, you know, we, we have a, a little bit of a luxury of kind of being able to, ha- you know, have, have a choice, which is really cool, right? We don't need to find 10 cities or 12 mm-hmm. cities to, you know, locate in. We're, we're picking one and, and pick the best. And when we think about where we want to be, one, the big, big factor is, is players and, you know, where do they want to be? Where are they comfortable? Two, obviously fans and making it really accessible for, for, for fans. And three is, and most importantly, kind of is, what are the accommodations? How good is the field? How good are the training facilities? What's the housing like? Because, you know, for us, um, you know, we we really want to deliver a really top quality environment for the athletes. I think that's, uh, you know, the biggest criteria is do they come, do they have an amazing experience, and do they want to return next season, you know, and, and that for us is is the big criteria. So, so we're down to a few uh, finalists, and uh, I think we'll have a decision probably before the end of the year. Um, and that's that. And then on the, on the youth side, absolutely. Like you said, I mean, uh, you know, listen, the youth space, there's a lot that's going on, right. In every, in every youth sports, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every sport, I will say, you know, um, lacrosse obviously stood out to us because, because youth participation still is very strong. There's so much interest. Obviously the women's side of the game is growing the fastest, you know, Mm -hmm. within the lacrosse space. So it's awesome, but let's be, let's be honest. Like, when you look broadly at youth sports in this country, you know, there's still, there's still some issues like, you know, and we want to be part of helping make, you know, get even more kids to participate and grow it more and make it accessible for kids. I mean, I think that um, we think for elite players, we want to play a role. Um, uh, Michelle Julius, who's worked with us and, and they launched the WPLL futures program. And we really want to see that continue. I think that's a great program that had an amazing response. Um, you know, gave a chance for elite athletes around the country to come together and be highlighted. So that's a big focus for us is like, can we keep that platform going? And we're, we're working on that right now. But at the same time, we're very dedicated to making this sport accessible um, and trying to broaden the reach and get this game into communities that maybe haven't traditionally played it. And for us, um, it's an important part of the mission. I think um, that's what will ultimately determine the success of this sport over the next 20 or 30 years. Um, and we're very committed to, you know, even though we're a new organization to, to being part of a part of that, uh, that mission. No, that's great. And you mentioned broadening your reach a little bit. The softball league that you guys ran um, was, you know, on uh, CBS Sportsnet, ESPN U, ESPN 2 and ESPN 3. Can we expect a similar coverage uh, for lacrosse in terms of broadcast? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I will say that that um, so so you're right. All 30 games were broadcast across ESPN and CBS, which was awesome. Uh, in addition, we did some really cool things. We we actually rebroadcast a lot of those games on regional sports networks. So if you're oh, awesome, you know, in, in, if you're in New York, you know the MSG network was showing those games. The Nesson network up in New England, Altitude around the country was showing them. Uh, internationally, those games were broadcast. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, softball is not known as a big international sport, but we actually had viewership and, and distribution through ESPN and CBS throughout Latin America and Canada. Um, we had a partnership with the Olympic Channel where these games were basically available online around the world. Um, we've now put up our games on YouTube. And then we had a great presence on social media. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we've got one of the stars of the social media, you know, world for lacrosse on, on with us right now. But I mean, I think Sammy Joe's done an amazing job, like, you know, just seeing how she's connecting with her fans, you know, on a daily basis and on a regular basis. And that's a huge part. Let's, let's be clear. That's a huge part of sports today. Men's, women's, whatever it is. Like fans care about athletes. They care about, you know, these great performers on the field. They care about what they're doing off the field. Um, and let, let's be clear, younger and younger fans aren't sitting back and watching television, uh, you know, broadcast as much as they used to. Um, some are, but but most aren't. And so you need to be on TikTok. You need to be on Instagram. You need to be you know, on Snapchat. You need to be on the platforms where younger fans are and give them highlights and give them access to, that they typically wouldn't see. They want to know what, what, what the players are doing. And for us, we're super committed to that and uh, telling those stories. No, I think it's a fascinating approach and we're certainly looking forward to it. Uh, Sammy Joe, John, thank you for joining me and best of luck. We look forward to seeing Athletes Unlimited take the field summer 2021. Thanks. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Anchor. We've been using Anchor for the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast since the very start. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place, and better yet, it's free. They allow you to easily record and edit your podcast, and once it's published, they send it out to all the major networks such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and many more. They also connect you with advertisers so you can start making money from your podcast right away. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast today, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Today I also want to talk to you about our affiliate Lacrosse Jewelry. Lacrosse Jewelry features a diverse line of lacrosse inspired rings, necklaces, and bracelets so you can show your lacrosse pride and style both on and off the field. Better yet, we've teamed up with Lacrosse Jewelry to provide you with a special discount. Simply visit laxjewelry.com and use the code PROLACROSSE Save 10% on your order today. All right, so you just heard from the CEO and founder of Athletes Unlimited, as well as one of the players signed on, uh, Sammy Joe Tracy, one of our recurring guests now. Um, so overall, guys, we got the news last week that Athletes Unlimited is having a women's professional lacrosse league. This will be their third league. Uh, they did a softball one this past summer, and they're doing an indoor volleyball in this uh, upcoming spring. Uh, what do you guys think of the news and – Obviously, there's a little bit difference. It's not a traditional league. So what are some of these uh, little quirks that you think from the league that you're kind of excited to see play out next summer? I would say I'm most excited for how much Athletes Unlimited really seems to be pushing the boundaries to push the sport forward. Men's lacrosse oftentimes is the most talked about, most followed, most covered. And now they're bringing in new ways, whether it's the new format based on the Olympic format or mm. whether it's the point system, which I think will um, engage a lot more competition, not only if it's just in between those teams, but the idea of like wanting to climb the leaderboard, accumulate points, win quarters. I think that a lot of those kind of advancements on the field, as well as what they do off the field with a lot of fan engagement is really going to continue to push the women's game forward, which is a huge step in the right direction. I really am excited about the opportunity for the AU to really uh, piggyback off of the world games that'll be happening this summer. Um, so I, I think Lax Twitter is going to be big on, on the women's world games in 2021 and I'm really excited uh, for the league to hopefully kind of take some momentum from that um, and get those four weeks of competition for the AU to really kind of propel the women's game forward. No and Nicole I think you brought up a, point, a good point too about you know, the competition between the individual players as well, earning points. I mean, Sammy Joe Tracy said that they'll be actually earning more money determining determined by, you know, where they finish in the leaderboard. So I think that's fascinating. Also lends itself a little bit to fantasy sports. So what are you guys' thoughts on, you know, potentially having, uh, whether it be a fantasy pick em game, they did a DraftKings with the softball league, they did it this past summer, but, you know, fantasy sports kind of being introduced in the women's game. Do you think that will kind of increase engagement and get people more interested? 
I think that it would be a huge step simply because people we've seen it in the men's game where people love to follow players. Like you get to know mm -hmm. them and I'll say, you know, as a Syracuse person, a little bit of a homer then for <laughs> Kayla Trainer, um, Hallie Major Rana, Michelle Tumalo. So it'd be excited to be able to see what teams they land on, how they climb the leaderboard and then kind of bet or, you know, make decisions in a pick them based on who I like, rather than just being like, oh, I'm going to become a fan of X lacrosse club, X lacrosse team. So kind of that shift, well, I think allow, allow for more player focused um, decisions. And that I think that we've just seen betting elevate most sports it gets involved in. So mm -hmm. why not add it to the women's game? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really excited to see uh, what the, the betting side of things looks like. What are the over-unders going to be? What are, are, are the prop bets going to be, look like for, for this league? I'm really excited to see, one, what, what the point system is going to look like when they officially do announce it. What's the difference going to be comparative for an offensive player to a defensive player, right? Um, what, what is that going to look like? So I'm really excited to see what, what they have. It'll be a, a big day when the announcement comes. Yeah, especially with the fact that that breakdown comes in at 70-30, I think that's going to be really interesting to see how much those 30% of the points that are individual performance-based when they announce that point system really come into play and how much they can really elevate those different players up and down the leaderboard and really then take shape of teams. Yeah, no, and it really lends itself. Like John uh, mentioned in the interview, like to fantasy, you know, they already have a point system in hand, you know, that they're ranking these players. So why not like open it up to fans to, you know, create their own rosters? You know, they, they didn't do that with the softball league, but he said, kind of hinted that they're kind of hoping to experiment with that. Um, if not with volleyball, hopefully with lacrosse. So I really hope we get it. Um, it, you know, it's just really exciting too the fact that these women are going to get a chance to play because, you know, everything was kind of up in the air. So kind of let's look at this uh, roster as well. I know Nicole also wrote an article, guys, so make sure to check that out on prolacrosstalk.com. Um, she kind of gets the breakdown. She talked to Meg Dowdy a little bit too about her involvement in the league. Um, but let's go over this list because there's some big names on the list that have already signed on, and there's some people that, you know, haven't signed on yet that we're hoping – will be so right now you got meg dowdy michelle tumalo amber mckenzie kayla trainer emily peros kaylee waters amanda johansson Haley warden sammy joe tracy katie hirsch courtney fortunato katrina geiger Haley majorana taylor hench sarah brown Brittany reed lindsey roanbeck charlotte sofield taylor van thoff Britt brown molly wolf and mira shane so that's 22 players right now they want to get up to 56 um, some pretty notable names missing like Taylor Cummings, Kylie Olmiller, Marie McCool, um, Dempsey Arsenault, Sam Apuzo, Alex Oss. I mean, those are all some big names that hopefully will join this league. And, you know, maybe they're going to announce another wave of signings as your article said, Nicole, but um, what are some people that, you know, you were surprised to not be in this initial announcement? Yeah, I definitely was shocked by some of the like younger talent, those names that we've like mm -hmm. expected to see kind of coming out of school, rising up the ranks and then kind of jumping in. So definitely Dempsey Arsenal, Kenzie Kent and Sam Apuzo, the th big three of BC that just mm -hmm. graduated that everybody keeps talking about, you know, even though they didn't clinch that national championship when they were still got so much pride for like the women's game and what they've done. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see all three of them jump into this league. Um, beyond that, I will say like definitely Taylor Cummings is a big one, um, especially with the voice that she's given to the women's game and been like that mm -hmm. name that everyone can toss around. I'm hoping to see that she'll sign um, going forward because just the level of talent will definitely be um, a big person to add as well. Yeah, and going off of that, I mean, Kylie is another big one. Uh, and, you know, Marie McCool um, was another name I was surprised not to see on that list. So, but I'm really excited for the crew. You know, we're talking about maybe who's not here. Uh, there are a ton of top tier names, as we already mentioned on, on that list that was already announced. Uh, when, when there's a women's pro game, if Kayla Trainer's on not in it, uh, I don't know if I want to watch. No, she, she's just one of the best players in the world. And uh, we mentioned already talked to Sammy Joe Tracy a little bit too. Um, really excited to see what, what this crew that they already have announced can put together once the season rolls around. I'd love to see if they could bring in the Pareka sisters too. We don't have either Shayna or Sydney yet signed. Right. So it'd be nice to get the both of them um, to be brought into that league. Cause especially they just need to bolster up some of that midfield talent when seeing yeah. like a lot of the positions that they've already chosen. They picked a lot of the standard defenders I would have expected. They have a lot of goalies already. I was like, yep. darn, they already have like so many, <laughs> um, but definitely that midfield, they're, midfield, they're going to need some more players in there just on like terms of being able to play with four teams. Um, so that's definitely an area I'll hope to see like, 
like which players that they're able to pick up and sign. Yeah. And hopefully it'll be a trickle effect. Cause you know, Sammy Joe Tracy was initially not, you know, signed on and uh, the players committee went to her. And so it's pretty likely that these players are going to, you know, recruit more players to join. Um, and we're definitely looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be interesting to them switching up the teams every week for this five week format. Um, we're lucky that we're going to get to see it too on TV last year's uh, this past summer softball league was uh, broadcast on CBS Sportsnet, ESPNU, ESPN2, and ESPN3. So hopefully we'll get the same for lacrosse. I don't see why we wouldn't. Um, and that's just great for the fans at home that can't watch. We don't know what's going to be the case with uh, COVID. Hopefully everything will kind of be back to normal and you'll be able to have fans at this event. But if not, you know, we'll get to enjoy from the comfort of our homes as well on TV. So I just really like how um, the league seems to really be putting an effort on building the personal brands of these players. I know that's a main focus because they're, they've taken the model of fans want to follow these players first over teams. And that's kind of how they've built this model. Um, and so far, I mean, in only, you know, less than two weeks, they've already put out a lot of content on these individual players. And I can expect that it's going to be more and more as the weeks progress. And they have, you know, almost a year now to prepare for this season. So certainly really excited. Um, any parting thoughts on this league? Anything you hope to see um, to when we get the return of professional women's lacrosse next year? I'm just excited for some good competitive lacrosse to come back and to see like all these players also to see kind of the dynamics, like will all the team USA players try to play together and get themselves mm -hmm. on a team will, like college players come back together if they played um, back in the day. So I'm excited to see how each week they're going to shake out and how that like just competition is going to result in the best lacrosse, hopefully for this women's game that we've seen yet. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm just imagining last year's NBA All-Star game, right? And how Giannis went, went through and, and didn't want to pick James Harden. I'd love to see video of, of the actual draft uh, each week and how that, uh, you know, dynamic changes after week one comparative. You know, you had a big battle, uh, weren't too friendly with one player one week. Wouldn't it not be a good thing to have them on your squad the next week? So I'm excited to see how uh, the drafting from week to week goes. And really, you know, we, we didn't have a summer of the women's pro game. And, you know, I think a lot of us missed a lot this summer and this was one of those things and just excited to have the game back when we do. And even you know, not I'm having coaches kind of getting jumped in there and like seeing the way that players like, Ooh, I know this about one like woman, like we should do this to like make sure she kills and score or like kind of that familiarity that they'll grow from playing with each other to then bringing that when you're playing against them, like it could just be absolute madness out there. I know. I'm hoping we get a lot of great content too, because you know, even though it's not going to be a bubble per se, it kind of is in the fact that they're in one location for five weeks. Uh, they'll be practicing during the week and then, you know, having these uh, games during the weekend. I mean, they're almost going to be, again, full-time lacrosse players for five weeks. We saw what that was like with the MLL for a week and then the PLL for the two weeks they were playing. And that's kind of what we're going to kind of get kind of a hybrid of that with this women's league. So I'm really excited um, again, you know, we've been big proponents of the women's game here, and we're just really excited that we get to continue to cover these athletes. Um, and we're looking forward to more information on this league as it progresses. Um, so you guys know, stick with us, uh, keep listening. We'll have more coverage. Nicole's going to have some more articles. Um, we're going to hope to have some more women's players on the podcast as we have in the past. Um, but this has been another episode of pro lacrosse talk. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys subscribe and tune into next episode of pro lacrosse talk. Today, I also want to talk to you about our affiliate Smart Backstop. Smart Backstop is different from traditional backstops in that it actually attaches to your net, preventing any missed shots up to four feet high and wide of the net. It can also be easily folded down behind the net for easy storage. Plus, this thing is built to last and is used by some of the top college teams. I'm someone who spent countless hours chasing missed shots in my backyard as a kid, and I wish I had this on my net. It would have saved me a lot of time and money on lost lacrosse balls. The best thing is right now, Smart Backstop is giving listeners $20 off their purchase and free shipping. Just use the code PLT at checkout, place your order, and then get practicing.